Were our 80s parents negligent or gnarly? This is my research question, and uh, it is very much rooted in my coming of age experience in the 80s. We were left to our own devices quite a lot, uh, unsupervised. We had the run in the neighborhood from the morning until it was time to go to bed. We would come home to go to the bathroom and eat something, and then we were right back out running around the neighborhood. And our parents really didn't worry that we were not safe or okay. Uh, they were in touch with the other parents in the neighborhood. And in the summertime, it was just kind of a wonderful way to grow up. That's not to say that it didn't have its downsides. I think that there were times when bullying was left unchecked and there was some exclusion and there were some sad moments and some serious risk taking as well. Um, I remember some pretty bad accidents in my neighborhood that kids had too. Uh, but I'm curious to know whether the style of parenting of my parents' generation's parenting skills, whether they have proven successful over time in creating well-adjusted adults and whether this is a style that is worth replicating because there seems to be some nostalgia for it. Um, or whether it's really better that we take a more involved approach in our children's lives as most modern parents do. So, uh, the great anthropologist, journalist, and Harlem Renaissance writer, Sora Neale Hurston, she said that research is formalized curiosity and it is poking and prying with a purpose. I love that and I love research. I can really just spend hours investigating a topic and getting lost in it. And so uh, keeping Zora Neale Hurston's quote in mind is helpful in the sense that I need to remind myself it's for a purpose. And you want to make sure that you're finding the answers to your questions. So starting with a question that you feel really passionate about is a great way to begin and then you can go swimming in the research. And so uh, that swimming metaphor is reinforced here in a picture from my childhood neighborhood. My best friend Heather is in the yellow bathing suit and that's her brother Kyle and a little girl who lived across the street from me, Kelly Hahn. She was a crazy daredevil, always jumping off of high things and her brother, uh, who became kind of a metalhead uh, in his later teen years. Anyway, there we are in our bathing suits as we were most of the time in the summer. And here we are going for our first swim in the texts. So getting into Google, of course, because this is just the easiest place for us to begin, I started with 1980s parenting to see where that would lead me first. Unfortunately, it took me to a lot of blogs, and this first one is supposedly geared towards fathers, and I, the article was entertaining, a 1980s parenting style can build self-reliant kids this summer. Um, like I said, people get nostalgic for 80s parenting in the summer because they just want to tell their kids, hey, go play, and that's essentially what this was about. It was mostly opinion, and I would not use this as a legitimate source for a research paper. It's just not. Uh, however, as I went through it, I did come across a link to a woman who is a sociologist at the University of Pennsylvania, and she seemed to have some research-based opinions. So I clicked on the link to her. I went to her website. I am motoring over there on my little go-kart with my sister and our band-aids and our big wheel in the background. And I ended up at the Phi Delta Capin, which is a an educational journal, and it is very legitimate. Here I found three separate articles that were pretty helpful to me. And um, they're about parenting and kids and school performance. But there was one that stood out to me a little bit more, and this one was the economic roots of helicopter parenting. 
Now, this doesn't on the surface seem like it's about 80s parenting. Uh, I guess it's really not, but it does kind of track some of the changes over time that have happened and proposes some reasons for why the kids who grew up in the 80s, like me, uh, have turned into parents who do things quite differently than our parents do. And uh, they think that some, some researchers believe that the, it's tied to the global economy. So from there, I was locked out of that website because I had my three free resources and I went back to Google. And I was met with a lot of mom blogs and, uh, you know, you just can't cite those. You just can't. They're, they're people's opinions. They're putting cute little pictures and there's not much there. So I started to get frustrated because I feel like I, I felt like I wasn't answering my question at that point. And I refined my search by putting in 1980s parenting emotional effects, hoping that that would do something. I was led to the American Psychological Association, which is a legitimate place to find information. And these are researched articles. Uh, this one, the title is Children Today Are More Imaginative Than in the 80s, study suggests. Hmm. Okay. So obviously I'm biased because I feel like I imagined all day long when I was a kid. And, um... So I had to look into this a little bit. I went and I actually found the paper that this person was had written to propose this idea. And I looked at her research methods. And the more and more I dug into how she put this study together, it struck me that there was only one way in which she tried to replicate a study that had been done in the 80s. And so all of the rest of the research was sort of based around newer methods and different ways of gathering information. And so with that only one thing in common to the original study group, uh, I felt like there's still more research to be done here. And I'm not going to use this as part of my research. Plus, like I said, I'm biased. There we are dressed up in one of our many, many series of dress up outfits. And again, this was sort of how we lived. We didn't really wear normal clothes. It was bathing suits and this stuff. Anyway, at that point, I needed to go back to Google. And then I finally started to get somewhere. This is the Journal of Child and Family Studies. And this article was thoroughly researched. And if you look at the date, it's 2018, which is still pretty good. And when you dig into the abstract there, it says that this is using data from a sample of 600 families. 600 is a lot. And so uh, I continued to read on, and this article gave me useful terminology that I feel like I will bring into my, my research and my presentation. So... This was definitely uh, a good find. And then I felt like I was on a roll. I found a really funny kind of interesting article about people who were metalheads, people who listened to heavy metal music in the 80s and who everyone was worried about. Everyone was convinced that they were going to turn into no good um, kind of down and out people. And this woman who had been a headbanger back in the 80s, uh, turned into a psychologist as an adult and researched this. And she found that, no, everybody was doing just fine. And so I thought that was directly tied to my question of parenting and um, was it a successful way to parent? So I'll have to go back and listen to the whole interview and read some of that research because it looks interesting. I also found an article at CNN and this one really zeroed in on my question. It's, the title is From 80s Latchkey Kid, and that's just like kids who were often unsupervised, like me and my sister, to helicopter parent today, which is how we are. So this was super interesting. It uh, interviewed a lot of people who are experts in the field and is definitely another resource that I can return to and mine and quote. So I was pretty happy about that one. 
finally, I found uh, something really different. This is a memoir style writing on com a coming of age summer. And the title is Those Were the Days of Our Lives. That is a soap opera reference. This generation will never know the true freedom and neglect of being an 80s kid. And so you see the, the writer and her brother there. And um, reading this story was surprisingly interesting because it helped frame my thinking and it helped me consider some possibilities for how I can make this a meaningful storytelling creative research project to present. And I started to visualize uh, interviewing my sister and maybe going to the park down the street from where we grew up and where we played in the creek a lot and how that could be an interesting place to set an interview and would really add, I think, some richness to the presentation on the whole. So, and I might also interview more than one person. Maybe I'll interview a psychologist and ask if that person has opinions about kids from the 80s and, and see what I find. But at any rate, this article made me think about how I could present things and the storytelling element. So I'm excited about my project because I can see it taking shape and forgive the cheesiness. I'm feeling like this project could be pretty righteous. So hopefully you get a sense of the way that I'm asking you to research. Being open to, yeah, starting with something like a Wikipedia or a blog that you can't actually cite, but that can get you going in the right direction. Not stopping when you run into dead ends, but just finding another direction, maybe refining your question a little bit, paying attention to whether you're getting somewhere with answering your question. And if you're not, maybe circling back around and thinking of a different way to phrase it or to frame it. But um, continuing on and being open to finding research in different interesting places, gathering your sources, keeping track of them all as you go, and checking in with me if you need some help. All right, I'm excited for this. I think you're gonna do an amazing job. Let's get going.